Inflation in the United States hasn't been this high in 40 years. We're at 7% inflation, meaning that if you didn't get a raise last year, you're now 7% less able to afford goods and services than you were last year. And the blame game has started. Whose fault is it? Is it fiscally irresponsible policymakers, corporate greed, Putin's foreign aggression? As it turns out, none of these are the right places to look. So how is inflation controlled? And what does it mean for our economies and our wallets? I'm Cameron Harwick, a professor of economics at SUNY Brockport. Let's break it down. Inflation is how economists keep track of how fast average prices are rising in an economy. Prices, meaning it's plural. A common mistake people make when thinking about inflation is just looking at one price. And usually that's the price of gas. But gas prices are a particularly bad metric for inflation because its day-to-day -day price is so dependent on industry-specific supply factors. So feel free to blame Putin for high gas prices. But if you're looking to know why all prices are rising across the board, you have to look beyond any particular industry. That's also why, when political figures like Elizabeth Warren blame inflation on corporate greed, or when President Biden blames it on excessive and unfair profits, that might explain high prices in certain industries, but it doesn't explain rising prices, even in competitive industry. Did corporations get 7% greedier last year? Are our industries 7% more monopolized than last year? Of course not. And if a company could get 7% more profit just by raising prices, why wouldn't they have done that last year? Because they can't. Even monopolies are limited by market conditions. Now, usually we think of the price of a good as reflecting the supply and demand of that good. But it's important to remember that a price reflects the supply and demand of two things. Not just the good that you're buying, but also the money that you use to pay for it. And the supply of money is the key to understanding inflation. Since money is used to pay for everything in an economy, the supply of money impacts the price of everything. And the supply of money is determined by the monetary policy of the Federal Reserve, the Central Bank of the United States. Their job is to make sure that the supply of money matches the demand for money. And it's a delicate tightrope. If the Federal Reserve undershoots, you get deflation and recession, which means that prices will fall and unemployment rises. And if it overshoots, you get inflation and shortages throughout the supply chain. When the COVID-19 pandemic first hit, the demand for money rose, but the Federal Reserve overshot with the supply of money. But you can't blame that on the President or Congress, as many might think. Now, the government did respond in multiple ways to the pandemic, including sending out stimulus checks. And some people blamed those checks for increasing consumer spending and therefore causing inflation. But the checks themselves don't affect the supply of money, and they don't necessarily increase total spending. After all, that money has to come from somewhere, and Congress doesn't have the ability to print money. Since the Federal Reserve is operationally independent of Congress, Congress can't ask the Federal Reserve to print more money for them either. And good thing, because they'd likely be running the presses all the time. So why did the Federal Reserve overshoot if it wasn't to pay for the stimulus checks? Back in 2008, there was a crash in the housing market that spread to the rest of the economy. And when the economy gets rocky, people get cautious and want to hang on to their money rather than spending it. In response, the Federal Reserve created huge amounts of money trying to match that demand. But it wasn't enough. And for years, they undershot and unemployment stayed high. The Federal Reserve doesn't want to repeat that. So at the beginning of the pandemic, they were much more willing to err on the side of inflation. Now, as the demand for money falls back to normal levels during the recovery, the Fed is scrambling to undo a lot of that expansion. Now with inflation at 7%, it's natural to wonder, will the US lose control of inflation and go the way of Venezuela with an inflation rate in the tens of millions? That's what we would call hyperinflation. And that happens when the government deficit is so bad that the only way they can pay their bills is to force the central bank to print money for them. Now, while the US does have an uncomfortably large national debt, there's no sign that Congress will have to rely on the Federal Reserve like that anytime soon. In fact, the Federal Reserve has been cautiously contracting for months now. They don't want to go too quickly, or we could land in a recession that's worse than the inflation. It's happened before. In 1980, when they tried to get the 14% inflation of the 70s under control. But if the Federal Reserve doesn't make any huge missteps, we should expect to see inflation fall slowly over the next year or two until we're back at their target rate of about 2%. If you're interested in learning more about the economy, money markets, or macroeconomic trends, check out the Department of Accounting, Economics, and Finance at SUNY Brockport.